All right, let's talk about logging in the users. So this is going to be quite similar to the register functionality. Let's just start by creating a page and a link and then a form. So in our app folder, we have this auth folder. Within that, we want to create a new folder, call it login. So this is going to be forward slash login. And then within that, we will have page.jsx. Now as a starter, let's just export default function and call it login. And let's just return an H1 that says login for now. Then we want to go to the components folder and the navigation component. So this is where we are creating our links and the whole navigation. We already have a register. Let's duplicate that line and create one for login. So the label should say login and the href goes to forward slash login. Going back to our website, now we have a new link. If we click on it, we go to the login page. So that was very simple. Next, we want to create a form here and I'm going to copy everything from this page under register folder and then close this and paste it here. So we are using the use client directive because we are importing use action state. So that makes sense. We want to keep that. Now we don't want to use the register. So let's get rid of this. We have a link. So we want to keep that one. The function we want to call login. We need our use action state, but we don't have a function here. So for now, let's just add an empty arrow function. So we don't get any errors. For the title, let's say login. And this action on the form stays the same, which refers to this function right here, which is empty. Now, in terms of the form field, we need an email and a password, and we don't need a confirm password. So let's delete this div, which belongs to confirm password. And when it comes to error messages, we we will not have a similar errors schema for our login page. So I'm going to delete this part for the password error messages, but I will keep the one for the email. So for now, let's leave it as it is. Let's go down to the next div, which has the button. In here, everything stays the same, except this text that says register. We want to change that to login. And also we have a link that says or login here. We can say or register here and the href can go to forward slash register. So we already have a page for this and we can actually go to register page and link the login page to this href since we have a login page now. Okay, so that was just a detour. Let's close that one and go back to our website. This is our login form. We can go to register page from here and back to the login page. So this was quite easy and fast. The next step is to create our login function in the auth document. Let's go to our actions folder and then auth.js. So we can copy everything from register, but I want to take this a step by step again. So let's just collapse this so we have more room to work with. And we want to say export async function and call this login. We need to accept a state and form data. And then in here, let's just console.log something. For example, let's grab form data that get email. Now let's go back to our page component, which is under login folder. And instead of this empty function, we want to use login, which needs to be imported from actions forward slash auth. Now let's go back to our website, add an email, press login, go back to the terminal. We can see that email here. So the process is going to be the same. First, we need to validate our form field. Then we get the validated data and check if the user exists and their password match. And if everything was in order, we will create a session. But before we get to validations, we need to create a new schema. So let's open our rules.js. We already have this register form schema. We just want to create another one for our login. So somewhere on this document, I'm going to say export const login form schema. We will set this again to Z from Zod and then object and then define our rules. So for the email, we can copy these. We can say the email must be a string, must be an email and then trim the white space. Then we have a password. And for the password field on the login page, we don't need all of this validations. I'm going to copy these first two lines and then paste it here. So we are saying password must be a string and it must not be empty. And we want to trim the white space. Now, since we have only one message here, we can say password is required. And that's it for our login form schema. Let's close this one, go back to login function. 
and I just pasted these comments from the previous function. So we have some direction what we need to do. First, we need to validate the form fields. So let's say const validated fields, and we will set this to login form schema. So make sure it is imported from the lib folder. And then we want to save parse this one as an object here, and then pass down our form data. So for the email, we can say form data that get email and just duplicate that, change it to password. And let's add a comma here so we don't get an error. Then we want to see if this validation passed. So let's add an if statement here. And again, similar to the register function, we want to say if validation fields success was false using this exclamation mark, then we want to return an object that would be the error state. So we will create errors and the value of that would be validated fields, then error and flatten, then field errors. We can also send the email back to the component just to keep that email in the form if there was an error. This part is of course optional, we don't have to do that. So if the validations pass, we want to extract the validated data from that object up here. So we can say const and destructure that and grab email and password from our validated fields.data. So again, if the validations pass, we will have a data property in this validated fields. And within that, we will have our email and password. Then we want to check if the email exists. So we don't want to see if it's registered, but we want to check if email exists in our DB or database. So we did this in the register function. We want to first grab our user collection from our database and we created a get collection function in our db.js. This get collection is looking for a collection name and we can pass down users here. Now, before we continue here, we want to add an if statement and check if this user collection returned an actual collection or null. And this would return null if we have some database problems. So I will negate this and say, if the user collection was null, then return an object, we will place this under the errors. And then within that, we will have another object and we would target the email and just say server error like this. So we would see the error message under the email field. But if this returns a collection, then we want to check if the user with this email already exists in our database. So I will create a new variable. I will call it existing user and we'll set this to await user collection and then use the find one function, which is part of MongoDB. And in here, we want to pass a query. So we want to find a user based on the email. And we have email up here. If this query returns true, then we will have a user. Otherwise, we don't. So let's copy this if statement again and paste it here. And we want to say if existing user was false, that means we don't have a user with that email. We want to return an error under the email field and say invalid credentials. So if our database connection is successful and we find a user, we want to continue and check for the password. So we want to change this comment to check password. And in here, I'm going to create another variable. I would call it matched password. And we will set this to await bcrypt.compare. On the bcrypt package, we have a compare method that would take the plain text password, and that is coming from our form up here, and the hashed password. So the hashed password is coming from our database or this existing user. So we can grab the existing user and the password property in our database. So I notice I misspelled this one. So let's just fix it, match the password. So we used the hash function on bcrypt to hash a password and to retrieve or decrypt that password, we use the compare function. Now again, we need the if statement because we are now checking for something else. I'm copy pasting this if statement and say, if matched password was false, that means the password is wrong, then return an error under the email field again and say invalid credentials. So you can see we are just checking for different things before we actually get into authenticating the user. Now, we don't need to save anything in our DB, but we do want to create a session. So if all these validations pass, that means the user is valid and their credentials are valid. So we can create a session for them and log them in. 
Now we already know how to do this. We just want to wait for create session, which is a function we created in our sessions.js. And this is looking for a user ID. So we can grab the existing user and then underscore ID. So in MongoDB, the ID property starts with an underscore. And this ID is not just a string, it's a special object ID of MongoDB. So we can change the two string here so we don't get any errors. And lastly, we want to redirect to the dashboard. So we can again use the redirect and then say dashboard. I'm also going to log the existing user into the console just to show you this ID thing, but I'm not going to keep it afterwards. Let's recap. In our login function, we validate the form fields using the login form schema we just defined. And that is basically checking if the email is a proper email and is a string and it's not empty. And same thing for password. Then we check if that validations pass, then we continue. But if it didn't pass, we will return our error messages to the component. Then we extract the validated email and password from our data object and we check if we can find that user in our database. If that is correct, then we will check for the password and see if the password is the same as the one we have in our database and we decrypt it using the compare method of bcrypt package and if everything is in order we create a session for that user and we redirect them to the dashboard so before we test this out let's just go back to the page component again so we are in the login folder and i'm going to copy this error message from email and paste it under password because we will have some error messages for our password so we just have to change the property name and that's all we have to do in this component let's see if we've done everything correctly I'm on the login page. I'm going to open the console. We don't have any errors under application. We don't have any cookies. If I press login, we get error messages, of course. If I add an email that doesn't exist in our database and some random password, this will actually check our database and we get invalid credentials because the email doesn't exist. But if I add a proper email, but a wrong password, Again, we see that invalid credentials and you notice the email is going away. If you want to keep the email, you can send it back to the component same way we did right here. So you can include that in these error messages if you want to keep it. But I don't think it's necessary. We can just retype it. So now let's actually log in. So I'm going to enter my correct password, press login. You notice we are back to the dashboard. The session was created and everything seems to be in order. So if we go back to our terminal, you notice this object that is coming from our database and the ID is not just a string, it's a new object ID, which is part of MangoDB. And that's why we use the two string method to make sure we are passing down a string. So we can see the email and the hashed password and everything seems to be working properly. Now you notice this was much, much easier than the register because we've already covered most of the things and we were just using the functions we already defined in our application. So we were able to cover the whole login functionality in one video. Now in the next video, we'll see how we can hide these elements based on the authenticated state of the user and how we can use this value in our cookies to see if a user is authenticated or not. So that is our next job.